I just now realized that this... I wasn't broadcasting live. I've been sitting here painting, reading the comments, and then, uh, and then, and thinking like, why are people saying the same, like talking about what I've just said? I've just talked about that part of the biography, and and then I was like, and then I see people be like, maybe we should message him and tell him that uh, what's ask what's going on. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the episode. Um, I'm surprised there was so many of you who stuck around <laughs> for the past hour and a half, leaving comments there. I don't know what happened. Um, technology, okay. So, um, I'll probably upload a, the, the, all, the, I'm always recording these on my side, so I'll upload the, uh, the version of this that uh, has the first hour and a half of the episode in here. Um, ah, that is a... That's super frustrating. Okay. So, how do I <laughs> rewind? Uh, I'm not going to talk about his biography. I'm, I'm basically just going to replace what you're seeing right now with the, the the original video here after today's episode airs. Um, but just for those of you that, that have been patiently waiting for the stream to start and you're wondering what's going on, basically let me just give you the, the kind of the quick bones of what I did here to get this painting to the stage that I'm at right now. So originally... I, I, I transferred the image, as always, right, using the carbon paper. And then I painted my warm yellow over top of everything, right, and actually applied a fairly thick coat of the warm yellow. So I, I did dilute it with some water, but it was maybe a little bit thicker uh, because there's a lot of warm yellow in the, in the painting uh, at, you know, already that's that's kind of pervasive throughout this entire painting after i got the warm yellow down i also I, I let it dry and then i took a little bit more warm yellow and i painted it in a few different places kind of uh as you see in the painting kind of in this area and here maybe maybe a little bit a few other places not so much um then i also took a little bit of the cool yellow and a little bit of white and i painted it in a few places like here and here, maybe a bit on the, I think that was about it. I let that dry, blow dried that. And then what I did is I took my cool blue and I took some cool blue and a little bit of white. And I used that to paint in really primarily this area right here. And it wasn't quite clear to me. I'd used a little bit of the backside of my paintbrush just to do a bit of scraping in this area, thinking that, uh, we kind of give some of the effect that we have and then I just did the same thing again took a little bit of the paint that I mixed here originally and then I just put it to the side added more matte medium into the paint and then painted um, elsewhere around uh, the painting uh, I also did the same sort of thing with my cool red so all of this area here is my cool red with again a little bit of white and a little bit of matte medium just to make it a little bit thinner and i also was i've been doing a lot of just smudging with my finger as well as a lot of um dry brushing okay so <laughs> i was like sitting here like people are leaving comments like, oh, should we paint, should we do the warm yellow first or not? And I'm thinking, haven't you guys been watching? I, uh, what? <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, goodness. This whole time. I know so many of you were still paying attention. That's incredible. Um, yeah, and like Pascal was like, he's from uh, FYI, he's from Belarus. And I'm like, I, I just said that. What? 
<laughs> no one was watching for the past hour and a half. Ugh. Um. Okay. Well, I'm gonna continue with this painting, and we'll I'm just gonna cut this little bit out of the middle, and then we'll <laughs> I'll pick it up. I'll, I'll upload the the version of this anyway. So where was I before I, I, I realized my huge error? Uh, what was I just doing? I think I was about to move on to my warm blue here. So with my, because I've now painted a lot with my cool blues, I'm gonna take my warm blue. And in fact, I'm just going to mix it right into this paint right here. Because this is my cool yellow with a little bit of white and matte medium. And I'm just going to use this as well because the whole idea is to get this a little bit thinner. In fact, maybe there's a lot of white in there. So I'm just increasing the ratio of color to white. Um, and then... It looks a little bit purpley, which is, reminds you that that's why it's a warm blue, right? A little bit of matte medium in there, just to make it a little bit thinner. And then I'm going to go around and paint with this. Well, <laughs> here I was just trying to be um, a, a great micro, or not micro, uh, multitasking dad, doing, uh, putting our daughter down, getting her to go to bed at a, right before we went live. Thought I was so clever and smart, had it all together, and didn't press. Uh, uh, set it to stream so I really have been talking just to myself this whole time <laughs> um, okay so I'm going to darken this again as we go but this is just kind of these little washes of color that I'm applying and so this painting kind of looks a little bit dirty and um, it was just like a lot going on. People, I saw people asking, should I do the, the uh, uh, underpainting or not? So I didn't actually do an underpainting. I just skipped that and went right into the painting. Um, <laughs> you guys were trying to message me, get a, let me know what was going on. That is so weird. I could have sw usually. I've, I don't think I've ever made that mistake before. So, I'm not. I thought I could have sworn it was going out live, but obviously it wasn't. So we can, by layering colors, we can make them appear darker and darker without actually using a dark color, right? And that's one of the fun things about layering paint is we can actually take two relatively light colors just by layering them all of a sudden get a much, much darker effect.
I gotta say, I am blown away that so many of you were sitting there watching, waiting for things to get going, and didn't give up. That is just blows my mind. You guys are a super dedicated group of artists. Wow. I am just... That is remarkable. Great job, you guys. Okay, so let's just take another look at this stage. So slowly getting darker and darker. And I almost think, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna do just now a little bit of, of some blue, just maybe on its own. Maybe I'm still gonna put a little bit of matte medium on here. I wanna try to avoid getting too solid too quickly. So now th this is the same thing, but this one had some white and also a little bit of the cool blue. So this is just gonna be a little bit darker or a little more opaque. I'm not gonna put it everywhere because then that would sort of negate the whole purpose of doing what we just did. something always something kind of getting darker and darker. And by doing this also I have a lot of freedom as to like how I want to build where those darker areas and, and what areas are going to get darker and I don't kind of go too dark too quickly like the people in the crowd just like little blobs of paint
Getting closer and closer to the point where I'm, I might start even doing a little bit of outlining now. Because I think what he's doing is applying... I think he probably got the painting pretty close to where I am right now. And then sort of doing some of the darker outline. I mean, I think he did those darker outlines to begin with. And then painted and then did them afterwards a second time, perhaps. But I just used my pencil lines as my underpainting. Just because there's so much detail here. It would have taken me an hour just to do that underpainting. When I basically have those lines here anyway. Um, you know what I want to do is a little bit more of the warm red. So previously I just used warm red with a little bit of white, for instance, to get into some of these areas. It's quite a lot of paint. Um, and that just helped kind of ensure that this red would be nice and solid and punchy. Yeah, there we go. The other thing too, painting this warm red over top of some of these blues is going to get me very close to like, not a black quite, but like a very dark brown because those colors are kind of opposite each other on the color wheel. Not entirely, but, but close. And so I can kind of use the red to darken the blues. So I kind of paint and then I'm just kind of smudging with my finger. Now he's painting with oil paint, obviously. So he's using different sort of processes than we really have available to us as, as acrylic painters. Where he's sort of like staining it with some, probably a lot of turpentine in that paint. The sort of like rubbing with your finger is in a little bit of a way kind of kind of similar. But a lot of dry brushing in this painting. And I know some people don't like the dry brush technique. But uh, so many artists use it that I think it is helpful just to try using it again and again if you can. Is a great 
start. Oh, you know what? I think I might just take this red on my brush so it's basically kind of dry and some warm yellow and maybe just do a little bit of punching up some of the oranges that might have got a little bit um, buried with some of the paint I put down already. might even just take a little bit of white into this paint here. Paint a bit of this here. I'm going to have to go back and put my warm yellow over top of these areas. Oh, you know what? Let's do a little bit, I think, of there's some white in this painting. I think that would also be kind of helpful to get a little bit of that white on here. Now, I'm not going to put the white exactly just pure white. There'll be a little bit of, of other color in here. So let's just take more of this white. Actually, you know, let's do it with the cool yellow just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Now here I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. He might have done a little bit of this afterwards as well, probably. It's a touch up, so it's not like it doesn't have to be all just one or the other, but. And you know, sometimes 
even after the white dries, you want to do a little bit more. I mean, that's famously what Thomas Kincaid would say, is you can never put enough white on there because the white makes it glow. And so you just sometimes have to keep on, once it dries, put another little bit more. And I know some people aren't big fans of Thomas Kincaid, but he did some, he knew how to use color, that's for sure, so. To get those glowing paintings. fell up here with the drum I'll do all those little details little spots and pops I might do that at the very very end like all like very unusual to put this white on here like this. Like, certainly not something that I would have done, but that's what makes <laughs> him the, the great painter that he did, is he's doing things differently than, than what other people did before him, and maybe even after as well. That will do, in fact, let's, well, let's just do it right now. Let's take a little bit of this blue and 
white. It's got a bit of a greenish thing as I mix them together. That's okay. Though. Remember to keep it loose. Don't worry about perfection. funny you guys are all so polite that uh it took until like an hour and a half for for me to see that the comments were because everyone was like oh just sort of talking in the chat nothing too urgent until they're like i hope he's okay i wonder what's going on i've tried messaging him and i'm like what do you mean i'm reading your messages <laughs> Okay, I don't know if I want to do too much more because I think I want to put some more, some darker blue on now, bef just before I do any more. So, what I'll do now is I'm going to mix my basically a black. I'm going to Take my uh, cool blue and warm red. Let's mix that up. Take some cool yellow. And we mix those three colors together, we get pretty close to a black. Now, if it looks a little bit purpley, that tells us we probably got a little bit too much blue in there. If it's a little too much green, if it's too greenish, maybe there's too much yellow and blue. If it's too brown, like this, this is pretty brownish, although it's not bad. It tells us there's probably too much yellow and red, and we need to add more blue to it. I might just put a little much. Actually, no. That's just perfect. So now there's our gray, or a really, really dark, dark, dark gray. And we can use this to modify the values of the paint. So I'm gonna use that in conjunction with my warm blue. But I'm also gonna add just a little bit of medium as well, just to give it a little bit of transparency. Because we spent a bunch of time building up all of these layers of very thin, kind of very loosely painted areas. And I don't want to just obliterate it with this dark. I want it to all kind of fit in here. So let's kind of go back up top. Kind of smudge a bit of that out with my finger. So we don't have to paint over everything either, right? We kind of want little patches.
I'm just sort of getting kind of dark, darker. I could go even another layer of that on here shortly. Do her hair with this woman standing on the horse. I have seen this painting titled Circus Horse as well. In case you want, you're looking for it. Under that name. Let's just see that and see how that's working. Okay, getting getting there. Um, maybe before I move on, basically, I think at this after this, I'll start doing my outlines, and then we'll start. You know, we'll we'll be getting closer to finishing. I'm gonna take some of my. Well, actually, that was. Hmm. I was just gonna take some warm blue and that dark color, but I think that was just too too high intensity. So let's take a little bit darker.
Okay. So the only thing I'm now starting to debate, debate internally is do I want to use like a Posca pen or just a brush to do um, a lot of the the line work? Um, Posca pen would certainly go much, much faster, wouldn't it? Maybe I will use one of those. I don't know if we've used those in, in one of these beginner classes yet. So right now, everything is, is getting close. Um, I think I do want to add just a little bit more actual... I don't think I've used the magenta on its own just right out of the tube. So I'm just going to take a bit of this. a bit just amp up some of these color contrasts a bit I'm just going to take some of my ultramarine blue on its own without anything on it. I mean, my brush still had a bit of that magenta on there, so if it goes a little bit uh, pink, that's okay. Or purpley, I mean. Hmm. Looks like I need just a bit of white. Not quite. Just spreading it around a little bit with my finger. So I've just got this really nice richness of colors that as the layers have kind of been building up on there, now all that color is shining through all those different layers and it's working doing exactly what I want it to be doing.
That's my cool blue with just some white, some leftover stuff that I had there from much, much earlier. I'm just going to use a little bit of of this blue, and then I think I'm going to do most of the rest with a, my black Posca pen. Um, so just the... And that black Posca pen, you know, it takes a while for it to dry, so you kind of want to be just... Um, painting it maybe towards the very very end of a painting so that uh, uh, because if you try to paint over top of it you might not you might be mixing and smudging and all that kind of stuff which is not necessarily a bad thing but if you don't want that to happen you've been warned So I'm going to blow dry this. Okay. So, I've got lots of different Posca pens. These are really helpful for doing line work on a painting if you don't have either the time or the patience to do to use a brush. Now, I do think learning how to use a brush to do fine details is 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 super important. But you know, if you're just starting out, trying to do lots of little lines in a painting can be very frustrating. It can be super time consuming. So using one of these pens called a Posca pen um, or an acrylic pen is gonna just save so much time because basically you're drawing with paint. It's an incredible tool, highly recommended. They cost about somewhere between five to eight dollars at your local art supply store and they come in different thicknesses uh, I think I got one here it's got a brush tip um, and they actually last I'm surprised at how well they they've held up like when I first started using these I would always be really afraid that the the tips would would dry out and you'd have to wash them so I would sort of use a rag and just sort of wash excess paint off in the same way that you might want to take care of like a um, a spray paint can and kind of clean the nib so that the paint doesn't get 
doesn't dry in the nib and then it doesn't work anymore so you just want to sort of maybe just try the longer you care for any of your supplies the better you care for them the longer they're going to be useful in the and the better quality of marks and, and brush strokes you'll, you'll get out of them anyway maybe before let's um Okay, so I don't know if I projected a foreground pass number one, but this is just sort of the end of the of the really the foreground. This is really where I'm going to start doing all my outlines. Not quite the finishing touches, uh, because there might be a little bit of other details I do after I use this Posca pen, but um, we'll be pretty close, I think, by the time we get all of this done. Okay. So... I'll probably just start in the top left corner of the painting that because I'm right-handed and that way as I'm drawing on it my hand isn't going to get all over the bottom or I'm not going to be stamping too much all over here so <clears throat> let's zoom in Uh, well, also, I forgot to mention. Give it a little bit of a shake. There's that little cartridge in there that's just helping to mix the paint. Especially if they haven't been used in a while. This is really helpful. Um, and then can even just take this and just try it out. Beautiful. So let's start here. So you can see how much easier this is to use than trying to do all this with a little paintbrush, right? Um, I'll do little details like paint that eye in blue later on.
So there's there might be a few things that I feel like I have to to paint back in as after I've finished this whole process, right? I can already see a bunch of them, and that's what we'll use for our, our finishing touches, part of the painting, right? And just like look how wonky this circle is, you know, both in mine certainly, but also in, in his, right? You know, I've, I've said many times throughout this episode that like he's certainly not concerned with perfection. He allows himself to play and to make mistakes, if he even considered them to be mistakes. So we got all these people here. And so the way that, you know, we're drawing these people is pretty loose, right? They're just sort of blobs of shapes and... I'm, I'm really taking a lot of liberties, as you may want to do yourself, if that interests you. Like, you know, that line didn't go perfect. But you know what? I can paint over that later if it bothers me so much.
The one thing about using a, one of these pens to do everything is that, you know, now I've got like black lines and I could use, a, the one thing, these Posca pens don't come in every single color, right? So, you know, I, I, I have maybe 10 of them, 10 different colors, um, but we can't get quite the same level of like nuance that we we can, you know, if we mix our own paints. Now there are pens that you can put, mix your paints and fill a pen with acrylic paint. Um, I've actually never used them. I think you probably have to be using like fluid acrylics or something for that. Maybe that's one thing I'll do at some point here. Let's test those out. guy looks like he's on the toilet or something. <laughs> sure. What he's doing? Is that, is that a guy with symbols way up in the cra audience or the the rafters like that? It's so weird, isn't it? Let's just take a quick little check in and to see how things are unfolding. Yeah, like Pascal says, maybe the music group is in the mezzanine. <laughs> right? So what's I think it's helpful to see this right here because I could see a, a number of people, maybe especially beginner painters, you know, feeling before I started putting these black lines in that this was just a big mess. And you could see all of a sudden we start putting these lines over and all of a sudden these figures just start kind of appearing out of this mess of paint. And I know it's really hard to visualize what this is gonna look like if you're just getting started and you've never really done anything like this. Um, that's why this is a great painting to experiment with. You know, like we can, we can be really like um, playful with with these little characters and we can really be a very interpretive of the way that we apply you know the these layers of, of um, the Posca pen or whatever tool you might use to do any of this okay so let's continue just dive back in Okay, and all these 
figures over here. And it's okay to draw some people that are maybe totally obscured in the shadows here. Right, because that's what happens. People are in the shadows. I'm almost trying at this moment to, to draw a little bit faster uh, than feels comfortable so that I can try to get some kind of weird things happening that um, I might not ordinarily allow myself to do with these kind of strange faces in the crowd. Posca pens are, are quite the game changer. It's they're almost so helpful that you kind of have to be careful when you deploy them because you can be almost too reliant on them. And I don't know. Sometimes a tool can go from being like really helpful and important to just being kind of a crutch. And it's certainly when you're beginning, it's totally fine just to kind of, in, in fact, I'd even encourage you to sort of dive into a tool and really play with it. But you just want to be careful that it doesn't, you just rely on it totally for all of the, to do all the heavy lifting for you. And really like outlining should be, um, just something you use to kind of complement a painting. I I once had a teacher, I think I've mentioned this before, who who would just harass me all the time and said that like, you know, no good artist uses outlining. This is it's like no great filmmaker uses narration. You should do it all with visually. Which now as a teacher myself, I completely get that. Like, I, I understand why one might want to kind of emphasize learning how to use subtle um, variations of color to create uh, your images rather than just depending on the outline to do it for you. But there's also you know, hundreds of years of artists that have used outlines. It's not like it's only the 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 tool of the lazy artist. Um, so you're in good company if you really decide you really like doing outlines. There's no real right or wrong way to making a painting, right? And we've looked at so many different artists over the past couple of years that you could see there's um, there's at least one artist out there to, that you can use as an example of someone, like a shoulder to stand on, right? I mean, like what a difference those little lines make. All of a sudden this blob shape 
turns into something, it's like, oh, cool. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna put this, this isn't outlined, but I'm going to outline it anyway, because I felt like it needed to be outlined. Um, I'm just gonna back that out a little bit. Close to finishing these outlines. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of interpretation as I do this. Uh, kind of eyeballing a few things. But I, I really don't think you could do this wrong. I mean, look at how there's so many... If we were to talk about this from an academic point of view, this painting is just... This is basically a... 
a guide for like how not to draw the human body. Right? There's just like all of these these limbs are out of proportion and um and so I could see someone saying like whoa I mean I could see why some of the people critics at the time could have been you know shocked by this kind of thing they might have thought this is like some fraudster trying to pass off unfinished work or sketches as completed paintings But I don't know. I really, I think they're they are extremely charming artworks. Oops. Okay, so let's now just take a look at this. So one thing that, that you know has happened is this thing is sort of built up as I've been kind of dragging it through the paint. It's pretty rough on the on the tip of that pen. I have to wipe off some of that excess. Okay. So let's do our finishing touches. We're just gonna go around and, and maybe add color where necessary, if at all. There's a few little places I wanna do a little bit of work, but for the most part, I think we're pretty close. Now, let's even just see. So some, you know, these areas, you know, where I first started doing my outlines maybe 30 minutes ago, they're dry to the touch. But there's, if I get a little bit of wet paint on them, it will instantly activate like watercolors and come back alive again. So you just want to be careful. Um, so I want to do uh, maybe as minimal things right next to my black lines as possible. So I don't mix any of that paint in there together. So let's do, this was kind of a dark eye up here. So taking my dark color plus my um, warm blue. Get that, I think that's important. Maybe. bit inside there.
so we can do a little bit of work in some of these faces in the crowd either on their bodies or around the outside of their bodies like some of that paint just came alive Any more cool blue? dabs of paint for some of these folks in the crowd. Take some warm red. For that hair if it was necessary there.
the little dots of red up here. Now, this area here doesn't quite look as orangey as the original, but I assure you it's pretty orangey. So I'm just going to leave that. You know, I think I've nailed the, the colors pretty closely. It doesn't always appear that way on camera, but it is what it is. Again, just adding... Little bits of color, just randomly. I'm not even looking at the original. No, I don't really have any green, so I'm going to take my um, warm blue, which has kind of got some darker colors in it. I'm just going to mix this together. Get kind of a grassy green, because it looks like I want some down here. places Okay, um, what are the glaring omissions here? Oh, little white dots, I see that, oh, on the...
guy's abs. <laughs> Hmm, a lot of little white duds. It makes me think maybe I should break a Posca pen for that. Okay. So, I'm just going to use an, a white Posca pen. In fact, I should blow dry this before I use this pen, otherwise I could ruin it. So I'm just going to blow dry that real quick. So there's all these little dots. I don't know how many of these little kind of things I want to do. But like, let's say, well, let's, I'm just work my way from left to right so I don't get my hand all over everything. But, you know, little. These kind of hands or whatever, some weird stuff going on over here. I mean, I don't know. There's something kind of interesting with the way that he painted this figure that makes him sort of look like there's, you know, a whole universe swirling around inside of him that I think is kind of neat. Um... Wait for that to dry.
Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap up, I think, here in a second. I do this signature down here. Let's see. Just a little bit of these. Okay, I think I can walk away from this feeling satisfied. <laughs> so, let's, got to be careful getting my fingers on the front there. It's definitely different. I mean, I didn't expect it to go in this direction. Um, but uh, I just want to mix a little bit of a, um, a purple here I meant to put in earlier. Not the best blue for this. This blue's been abused here with a lot of black. Okay. So. 
Let's do our side-by-side -side comparison here. Let's just take a quick second just to remind you to like and hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. There's going to be a bunch of whole bunch of videos coming up in the next little while that um, are not on the regular Tuesday, Thursday schedule, including this Friday and this Saturday. So you want to make sure you are following the channel so that you know when those are happening. If you want to support the channel for as little as a dollar, you can leave a donation through PayPal or even through the um, Super Chat function here in YouTube. And so let's uh, take a look at the two paintings side by side and see how we fared. Yeah. Um, I actually think like in person, I feel like the colors are pretty close on camera the reds and oranges and things just aren't quite as deep as they appear but um or as they they actually are so i think i'm pretty close pretty close um you know there's there is some strange textures that he's getting in there which i suspect is a, a thick buildup of paint as well as like some maybe pouring techniques that I'd have to kind of look into a little bit further that I didn't expect. Like there's some sort of resists or something going on in here that look like watercolor over wax crayon or something. But um, ultimately, I think everything is pretty close. So, you know, I might have even have overcomplicated this painting more than, than really needed to, but uh, I had a fun time painting it. Let's just kind of zoom into a few areas here. You know, the, the dancer, maybe let's look at the dancer right here. Um, you know, I maybe simplified it a little bit more than, than uh, even his. Obviously took out some of the texture. I noticed those legs maybe could be blue. Little things like that. How about let's look at this. The, this must be the circus master at the bottom down there. Kind of like that his original was was is pretty actually now that i look at it, look at there's another a second eye there's two eyes and he's moved it down so there's every time you look at it more and more things start to appear there that i didn't even see the first time around um in mine i'm not so happy with the way my guy turned out here or i think this is a bear perhaps coming out of a a box, I'm not sure. Same thing here. I think I could have spent a little more time on that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just like little, little details over and over, which is, you know, typical for every one of these episodes where there's things where I feel like, ah, if I had another hour. But, uh,. And I added a little few things here because the original painting kind of clips off there. So there's just kind of mirroring the same sort of things that were on the other side of the painting. Um, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could do in interact e-transfer to Pascal, if you're wondering. Yeah, you could just send contact with me directly through my email, which is on my website or on the Facebook group. Um, but I appreciate that, Paul. So I usually do PayPal at the end of the month. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'm honored for any donations people give. I know it's not everyone has the, the means or ability to do so, so I appreciate any support. Even just people who are very active in the in the classes and on the Facebook page, that means a lot to me as well. So, uh, and it also means a tremendous amount to the other people that are part of that group when they see how active people are that are they're engaged, in making paintings, uploading them, commenting on other people's posts. All of that is also really really helpful. So thank you everyone for painting along with me uh, today. We're going to be looking at a couple of Ukrainian artists over the course of the next week. Uh, we've got a special 
April Fools episode on Friday. We're going to be doing Kramer from Seinfeld. I've been I wanted to do that 2 years ago. I've been sitting I I did all of the work for it 2 years ago and it just kept on getting kind of bumped around, so I'm looking forward to finally tackling that. And then of course on Saturday, we're going to be looking at all the great artwork you guys have been making. So upload take pictures of your art, upload it to the Facebook group so that we can take a look at it mostly stuff that we were doing around Christmas of last year so things like the Robert Indiana love the Renee Magritte paintings etc okay everybody enjoy the rest of your evening and we will see you guys in uh, on Thursday okay talk to you soon everybody good night <laughs> remember to put the stream on <laughs>